Hello guys, this is Panzer Mercy 36. Today we're going to be taking a look at, a, well, this is more like a product review kind of thing. I don't do these very often, but it's a little bit easier for me when I'm just looking at a single product rather than a whole weathering tutorial. Basically, MIG Ammo sent me a couple of products um, as like a little care package last week. And one of the things in the box stood out to me. So we're going to look at more stuff in the box later. But today I wanted to point out this thing. This is what's called a streaking brusher. Now I didn't even know this was a thing. These oil brushers have been out for probably two, maybe even three years now. I've had them for a while and I've used them uh, recently on the weathering video for the Sturm and Shoots 33, which was standard weathering procedure episode four. Uh, just like a full weathering story that I like to do. And I did some oil brushers in that, I liked them a lot. But then in the box there was this thing, which is a streaking brusher and I wasn't sure what it was at first. And I figured that if I have no idea what it is, maybe some of you guys had no idea what what it was. So I figured today we would just take a look at um, what what these both are like, and we can kind of compare them and see what they're doing. Essentially, I'll, I'll let you know now. Essentially, this is an oil paint, and this is an enamel streaking fluid kind of stuff. So while the oil brusher here aims to replace something like you know typical oil paint, the streaking brusher aims to replace your actual streaking grime effect and the way it replaces it is that it's in a more convenient package I guess and it has a built-in applicator brush both these work the exact same way you've got a brush here which you can use to actually apply it so we're gonna look at that today so before we begin the demonstration and the review of the products here I want to talk about a little bit about the whole kind of difference between the streaking effect and the oil paint now you can use any product for any purpose, essentially depending on how thick or thin you make it. But if you have just oil paint and a streaking grime or the equivalent over here, there's mainly two uh, major things that, well, one major thing that each of them is good at, so two things in total. So for oil paints, you're mainly going to be doing what we call a dot filter effect, where you apply a bunch of dots of usually more than one color, like you wouldn't just generally do one color, you'd pick maybe three or four. You apply a bunch of little dots over a flat area of the model, like let's say this side panel here. And then you streak them down with a with a flat brush like this, with some thinner on it. And the result is you get a kind of like a quick and subtle overall streaking effect. So a good example of that is the side panel of the Sturman Fajiga Shoots 33 here. You can see we've got a whole bunch of very, very subtle streaking effects on there. And I was done with uh, actually first a blue oil paint and then I went back with three dusty colors which is the major uh, dot filter effect where I put on a bunch of dots let them dry for like a minute their oil paint and then you streak them with a flat brush like this with a little bit of thinner on there and you basically just keep on blending until they're very very subtle so you don't have as much control with this as you would with a streaking grime which we'll look at in a second but it's very good for just an overall quick and dirty kind of make the flat single color area of your tank look a little more interesting. The reason why you want to use oil paints for this is because you want to actually make dots and you you want a little bit of a thicker paint for application. And oil paint, either in the, in the tube like this or in the oil brusher, is actually thicker in comparison to the streaking grime or the streaking brusher. So for a streaking grime, generally this is applied more for controlled application. So I want to point out actually two locations on this vehicle here. First of all we got this nice oily uh, region here around this engine deck portion. And you can see I've got a whole bunch of kind of individual streaks. Now to make these I'm going to use a streaking grime effect which is a lot thinner so I can actually instead of painting a dot and then blending it down I'm actually painting the streak and then I use my brush with some thinner to kind of clean up the edges a little bit. And I also want to reiterate you're actually painting the streak, not the dot. Um, so you want a, a thinner paint so you can actually kind of apply it. That's why the streaking grime and the streaking brusher are thinner paints. So a good example of that, like I said, is the region right here. where We've got these nice uh, kind of streaks here of oil that I would have done one by one. And another good location is on the other side over here, this region here where I've got a little bit of a, a dinged up area. So I would have painted a couple of little rusty streaks there and then blended them out, so that would have been more like the actual rust colors I've got here. 
So with that out of the way, I think we're going to begin with the demonstration here. I want to point out a couple things first. So the turret for the T34 that I'm going to be testing on, we already did some winter camo on this guy last week. But over here, this is the surface we're going to be applying the FX onto. Maybe you can see that it is a little bit shiny. I've given it a satin varnish, which is, well, satin or semi-gloss are basically the same thing. You don't want a glossy varnish because it's going to be too smooth and you're not going to be able to blend the effects out. You're just going to end up wiping them entirely away because since it's so smooth, they're not going to stick. Alternatively, you do not want a matte varnish because that's going to be basically too sticky and you're not going to be able to actually blend out the effects. So you want kind of halfway in between, which is a semi-gloss or satin varnish. So usually I just take a Tamiya satin or sorry, a Tamiya matte and a Tamiya gloss paint mix them 50-50 and then just airbrush that on and that serves as my my varnish there for the uh, the surface. We're going to be looking at both these. I picked these ones because they're both rust. So I've got the streaking brusher that Ammo sent me and I've got my own oil brusher here I've had for a little while. They're both rust. They're basically the same color. So we're going to just test them out. I've also got some Ammo odorless thinner here. I've never used this before. They sent me this as well so we're going to see how it works. And I'm going to also use an Ammo brush because they also sent me this. So. This is a nice uh, number, I guess a number six flat brush. So this is good for blending out the effects. We're going to start with the streaking brush here because it's kind of more what I'm interested in. So you unscrew it there. And we actually have a little bit of a longer applicator here. So the cap has an applicator built in, which is what you're supposed to apply it with. This is quite a bit longer than what's in the oil brush here. Probably more because this is actually supposed to be meant to be like a more of a streaking applicator. You're supposed to kind of draw that line rather than the oil brusher, which is just more of a dot. So on our turret, I'm going to make a couple of rust streaks. Now, I'm not, I'm not usually big on rust streaks. I'm sure you guys mostly know that, but we're just going to have some fun anyways. So we're going to pick some random areas where I want to actually apply a streaking effect. And we're going to kind of paint on the actual streak. It's kind of hard to do this on camera with the angles involved. There we go. So these, this brush isn't super fine, and I've ended up with a little bit larger streaks than I would generally like. Um, but I think it's all right. We can just kind of blend them out a little bit when we actually get to it later. Right now, we're going to actually do the oil dots, and then we're going to blend them kind of together. So with the oil brusher here, I've used these before. You can see that the actual brush is quite a bit uh, shorter, but also kind of fatter. And this is more for the actual dot applications. And so we'll use this to create a kind of dot filter effect. Though like I said before, generally you would want to pick more than one color. You'd probably pick on a yellow like this, I'd pick a blue, a light yellow, a darker brownish color, and then like maybe a red. Or a, a red similar to this actually. And that would give you some kind of variation in there. And it looks kind of terrible right now, but we're going to blend this out. So for the blending here, I've got a little bit of the thinner in a small little cup here. I'm going to get a little bit of on my brush. You don't want too much on your brush. You want to make your brush about 90% dry, almost like dry brushing but with thinner. So after I get some in my, my brush, I kind of just wipe it off like that. I'm going to start with the oil dots. And we're just going to kind of, they call it stumping it out. You just kind of go over back and forth with vertical streaking motions. Now generally, if I was doing some dust, I'd probably blend it out more than that. But I actually kind of like how it is right now. You can actually see distinct streaks on there. Um, and I guess if we're doing some kind of rusty effect, that would more, be more like a wreck. That there doesn't look too bad. Now you saw that when I was doing the uh, blending of the oil dots there, I just was kind of going over it back and forth. When I'm do using the streaking uh, grime here, I'm not usually going to go over it. I'm going to kind of come in from the sides and sort of knock it down like you see kind of what I'm doing here since I put on a lot because the brush isn't super precise I'm going to be doing some kind of removal where I'm kind of kind of scooping it unloading the brush 
but this is more of a kind of precise technique. So I finished blending the rest of the streaks off camera and here you can see the result. Now the streaking grime, streaking brusher streaks over here are as I was saying before more of a kind of controlled application. So when you compare them to this over here which actually did a little bit more blending on off camera. This is more of a general overall just kind of we want some streaks over this panel to break up the uniform color. So you put the dots on there and you just kind of rub them down and there you go you've got the actual streaks just kind of everywhere it looks cool you get some random you get a little bit of randomness in there when you're just blending it by hand but it's a little bit different than what we have over here where since I was applying them one by one and kind of guiding the streak down you get more controlled application which you can use to kind of highlight certain effects so for example I have a streak coming from the corner of this viewport here which I guess would be somewhere where the water would accumulate and run down so we've got a rusty streak there I've also kind of used a couple of rusty streaks to highlight this area of battle damage here where I did a scrape with the hairspray chipping effect. So I've got a couple of rusty streaks coming from that because as we all know rust tends to form around areas where the paint's been scraped off. And also I've done a couple over here around this interlock just for similar reasons to over here. It's a place where water would collect so you can kind of use these streaks to highlight certain areas like details like this and also previous wetting effects like the chipping and, and damage over here with this, with this scratch. So that's my little product review on the streaking brusher and also comparing it to the oil brusher that previously existed. Um, if any of you were not sure what the difference was like I was when I first opened it up, hopefully that helps you out. One's a enamel streaking effect and the other's an oil paint. Oils and enamels are essentially the same in the end. They use the same thinner and they're mainly used for the same kind of effects, dust, streaking, etc. But generally, like, like we saw in the video, the enamels are much more thinned down in the bottle wherever you get it here or a streaking grime and they're meant more for actually painting applications actually painting the streaks you can be more precise while the oil paints are generally thicker and are more for overall effects where you just kind of put some dots on there and blend it out though of course you can take your oil paint and then thin it down to the same consistency as the streaking effect or the streaking grime and then you just have them both with one but that takes a little more work and you can't really do that with the oil brusher because you're applicating it with this actual brush inside the bottle. Also the enamel thinner here, that worked perfectly fine. No issues with it damaging the paint or anything like that. Though the varnish I applied beforehand certainly helped. And this brush, I liked it a lot. It's a nice synthetic brush, very similar to what I'm already using from the, the general art store basically. Um, so I'm looking forward to testing out more of these on future product or a future tank, I guess, project. So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something new. And hope you're looking forward to what I've got coming up soon where I'm going to be looking at some more of these MIG ammo products because everybody's always asking me about different paints and products so now I can finally get some variation to you guys. So, I will see you then. Thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for everything you guys do for me. And also, huge thanks to the Patreon and PayPal supporters who... Uh, give me a little bit of money every month, which helps me buying paints and products like these oil brushers I got a while ago. Much appreciated. And like I was saying, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Happy mauling.